Hi guys, and welcome to my review of Doctor Who, Season 13, Episode 2. So this continues after the Halloween special from last week. I'm a bit late to reviewing this episode, but, you know, I'm reviewing it now. So yeah, basically, what happens is, instead of, I guess, the Doctor dying or whatever that ending was, she, she ends up in, like, a old time period where we get to see Mary Seacole, which is pretty cool. So it's basically the war where the Russians were fighting the British, but instead of the Russians, it's actually Santarians, which I was like, what? <laughs> so yeah, obviously I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about spoilers in this episode. Because basically, you know, time's been altered by the Santarians and what's happened with the Flux. Because they have something to do with this, with the Santarians basically taking over Russia and China. So basically, Russia and China in this timeline doesn't exist. As for Dan, the, the main character from, I guess, the last episode... Since I know his name now, yeah, he's a funny character. It's just his accent, his Liverpool accent. <laughs> yeah, I like it. Yeah, they, they do some stuff with him as well, where... Because he, he's with the Doctor at first, but then, like, both Yaz and him disappear and go back to... Well, Dan goes back to his home, and it's been, like, two days since he's been away. Yeah. And basically, the Suntarians have taken over Liverpool. Yeah. And his mum and dad basically protects him when he gets attacked. I guess his house is still missing. Yeah, because it got turned into like a small <laughs> house. Yeah. And they basically beat the Centaurian by hitting it on the head with a pan, which is just hilarious. Yeah. Because, man, these Centaurians shoot like stormtroopers, man. I forgot how bad the Centaurians shoot at people. They're basically stormtroopers from Star Wars. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and on, on the Doctor's side, she gets to meet Mary Seacole someone famous from history, which I ain't heard that name since high school days, man. Yeah, when I used to, you know, do history. And Mary Seacole was like a famous um, nurse. She kind of had like a own place as well and everything. And she kind of helped people in the war. Yeah, she took care of them. So it's cool that they used her in this episode. I really like what they do with Mary Seacole in this episode. <laughs> yeah. Like basically the doctor being her assistant, but then she's kind of has like a big, well, the doctor obviously has a bigger wall because... She knows what's going on and how time's been altered and they think like this is normal when it's actually not. <clears throat> like this was what's supposed to happen and I've even heard of China and Russia. Yeah, just things like that happening. Like basically the map's been changed from Russia and China to just Santa. <laughs> yeah, which is crazy. Basically making their own home in Earth. Yeah. And that is kind of spinning into the future because basically the Santarians have kind of taken over every time in history and the Doctor's trying to stop it. Well, find a way to stop it, but then the person who's in charge of the British army, well, who's got backed up from the Queen, like, well, the Doctor's trying to warn him of, with what's happening, and if he attacks, you know, a lot of people are going to die. He doesn't listen, so he tries to attack the Centaurians. They lose badly. And then that's when, I guess, he asks for the Doctor's help, which, you know, the Doctor has a plan to, to make them go back to their timelines and stuff and just make everything go back to normal. The plan ends up working and you know they're able to defeat them but as for the flux they kind of their plans are kind of working out a lot more with what they've done with like the flow of time and the people who control time like basically it's kind of broken and that guy who we met in the last episode who has that ship he kind of ends up in that in this place where time's being controlled but you know it's kind of broken right now because basically there's this flying thing that's saying to fix it like if they know how to fix it I mean, and Yaz ends up there as well for some reason. They're trying to fix it, but, you know, they don't really know what they can really do to fix, you know, time. <laughs> the force of time. Because it's really dangerous and it's going out of control right now. So I can't imagine what kind of things we're going to get in this season with time going out of control. And the Flux being the main threat, which probably is the biggest threat we've had in a long time. How dangerous they actually feel compared to... You know, other Doctor Who villains we're having right now, like, wow. <laughs> yeah, what they can do. It's just crazy, like, they're just, also those flying things that just make them vanish and stuff, just like in the previous episode of everyone else. Them wiping out the universe and stuff, yeah. And even though they've kind of brought it to a hold for now, it could still continue, especially since they've taken out the people who control time. Yeah. Man, things are getting crazy. And then with Dan, he kind of gets saved by that, you know, that dog guy. <laughs> yeah, I don't even know if he had a name or not. Basically the one who was protecting him in the last episode. 
yeah, he basically helps him out and protects him from the Centaurians until the invasion's over. Yep. And, you know, basically, <clears throat> after that, you know, the Doctor ends up in the same place where Yaz is and that pilot guy. And they basically, stuff has basically happened to him where they're kind of like hostage, but something bad could happen to him, like they could get erased. And they're basically a part of um, the Flux's plan. Because that, pi that pilot guy tried to shoot the Flux, but he just kept vanishing. Same with the, with the lady as well. So I guess they're going to be a hard enemy to defeat. I don't know how the Doctor's going to defeat these people. And I still don't know who they're tied to. I still don't know if the Flux is the Doctor or it could be... I don't know. It's just... Because they know so much. Like They, they even knew what the thing on Yaz, Yaz's hand meant as well. What would the Doctor do? Like They just know so much. They must be connected to something in the past or some character that we know. Oh, man. I just wonder if any, if anyone's done a video on who the Flux could be, like the leader of the Flux, because he knows so much that the Doctor and the companions know. So it must be someone that you know we've we've known before, but I guess we'll see soon. But it ends off with you know the Flux doing like a click to wipe out you know her friends, but I think they'll be fine. I don't. I think the Doctor will think of something. And it seems like things are going to get a lot more crazier in episode 3 with what's happening with time. So yeah. Will the Doctor ever be able to fix time? Find in the next episode of Doctor Who. <laughs> yeah. And that's pretty much it. Yeah, another good episode. Yeah, it was really fun. So yeah, guys. I really hope you enjoyed the review. I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Yeah,